Thank you, Marcia. Good evening. If I'm a little slow tonight, it's because I'm using a different set of spectacles and things at a distance a little blurred. It's not a matter of age, because I'm still very young. Let me begin by sharing a poem with you. To get you to understand how serious matters are in Barbados that we are faced with on a daily basis. First, they came for the communists and I did not speak up because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists. Guys, we'll be careful. And I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews. And I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me. And there was no one left to speak out for me. That is why we are here tonight. We are here because there are voices that cannot speak for themselves in this type of an environment who we have to speak for. I understand that there are some people who think that Christians and ministers should not get involved in politics. And I ask the question, how is it possible to separate your faith from people when both have to do with people? I believe that if Jesus Christ was in Barbados this evening, he would be here. Because he's interested in the well-being of orphans and widows. That defines society. It defines community. I must say at the very upset, that as a minister of this country, I am very disappointed in the silence I am hearing from the church, or should I say, the lack of vocalization I am hearing from the church. Because the church is not here just to get you to hell and get you into heaven. The church is here to teach you how to live righteous and how to defend justice and how to stand up for that which is right and how to apply what you learn in church to your life. That is why when I see politicians in church, and I have said it and I will say it again, I am hoping and praying that a politician never speaks from another pulpit in this church, in this country. Because you have no moral right to be speaking from a sacred desk where we are reserved to speak what God tells us to speak. If you come to church, sit your butt down in the chair, let God talk to you. If you want to pontificate your policies, you have the government information service, you have the nation, you have Plastics, you have the OP, you have your public meetings, do it there, but don't do it in my pockets. That is why God detests some churches that their stinking filth that is offered to him. I make no apologies for saying that. I know some of them will be vexed with me and mine with me, but I am in good company because the warm out of Jesus too. But I'm here this evening not to preach because they tell me that one of the biggest mistakes you can make is to put a mic in the hand of a Pentecostal preacher. An hour and 20 minutes later, he'll hand it back to you. But I promise you, I won't keep you that long tonight. <laughs> Tonight, as a people, we are facing some very, very serious winds that are blowing 
in this country. We have heard a lot pontificated concerning something called the Barbados Trident ID. I have said before and I will say again, the concept of the Trident ID card did not originate anywhere in this country. If anybody has been following the national news, you will know that there are two groupings. And I want to address one of them tonight because you are going to be in for a surprise when I tell you about one of them. There are two groupings that are attempting to dictate the financial processes of the entire world. And in one of those groupings, not a single man has been elected by anybody in their country. To represent them. One of them is called the World Economic Forum. It is a gathering of the elite, elite of the elite. And I heard a couple of men mention this event that belong to the WEF. One of those names is a man called George Soros. Who is in Barbados funding our UWI? And I challenge anybody to tell me different. Because I have the information where he and the former chancellor sat together and signed a memorandum of understanding to the Open Foundation to have fun you here in Barbados. This is a man who's been declared persona non grata in his own country. Cannot go back to Hungary. Creating hell in America, funding the BLM, false movement, and all of it. Unrest you are seeing in the United States. That man is who we have supporting our UWI. And by way of information, there is now a member of the International LGBT2 Plus Group sitting on the World Economic Forum Advisory Council. I am going to maintain some dignity. <laughs> I know it's only a question. I can't answer that. I can't answer that. There is an agenda that is outside of the borders of this country that are dictating the processes of what is happening here. Several years ago, the World Economic Forum proposed the idea of an international global ID card. And the purposes were very simple. I need to throw all the shots to control the people. That's what it's for. Coupled together with something that you are probably not beginning to hear about, Call the central bank digital currency. Now, I must tell you that there was a young man that just preceded me. And I said to him, just now I wish we had a hundred more young people like you in our face. A brilliant young man. Well schooled, well informed, well researched. And can hold his own against any of them, not he is too good. To engage the debate with anybody in Barbados, he will have to be engaged the debate with the guidance of the World Economic Forum. Some years ago, during the pandemic, I don't know if you all remember, a certain individual foisted the idea that we need to move toward a cashless society because cash is dirty. I don't know if you all remember who made that statement. I'm not calling any names. My mother taught me to be respectful and decent. And when I read the book of Revelation, I understand that the first thing the Lord did before he dropped lips and people is he gave them a commendation. Remember that? 
Some of you don't even know your Bible. Your Bible won't read it here. <laughs> if I read it no more than I've ever needed it before because it is the is you step up. There was this talk about a cashless society. We've been hearing this for years. But it's now on the verge of becoming a reality. And for your information, the citizens of Nigeria have just rejected it in Nigeria. A year ago, the Nigerian government forced it upon the people by force. And you know how they did it by force? Something called an ID card. Let me explain to you about this ID card. We are told, and, 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 and you see these technological things we got? I thank God for them because this in here say our conspiracy or misinformation because people have to deny what they themselves have said. They got denied. So I, I, I'm going to the I go into the facts. Let me read something to you from the World Economic Forum. The World Economic Forum's concept of the digital ID poses significant risks. You got that word? The most serious of which potentially, listen to the definition, being exclusion, marginalization, and oppression. Now, you heard for yourself. I can not hear you though. You heard for yourself that in the roll-up, that they're trying to push, and I understand, and let me read it, I understand there are now some over 200,000 ID cards, but only about 90,000 or something like that have been pinned. All right? Now, I want you to understand something. I don't have a problem with an ID card. Makes common sense. I go in here, I don't have one, so I gotta use my backyard. I don't know if anybody out there got one, but I got one. Your ID card is important. But I heard recently that one of the reasons you have to pay the ID card is so that you can confirm your address. Now, the, the irony of this is that on the day I heard that particular announcement, I received my land tax bill at my house, and I don't have a train ID card. So I am trying to figure out how to get my address. I can leave it to you to decide if that makes sense to you or not. All right? Then we were told that there's nothing dangerous about the ID card. It is really, you know, identification. But then we were told by a certain minister that the use of the ID card once it's spent will help to stress your movements. I am going somewhere with what I am telling you tonight here. But if you think this is a joke, you better be up. The reason we are here is to say to you, we told you, we told you, we told you. So we are told that it's not a sheet, you know, it's just a penny ID card, it's not a problem. But then we are told by the same mouth that the ID pen will help to track the movements and these different kinds of things and they were using the senior citizens as the rationale. Then we were told, let me tell you, see, you see, one thing by foolish. But I am not foolish. Barbarians can use their own identity, identification card for a while longer until the end of January next year, yeah. with a fair extension to the deadline for acquiring their new training ID cards. Yeah. 
Prime Minister Leah Motley made the announcements on Tuesday as she heard, listen carefully to what I'm saying to you, because I'm going somewhere with this. She urged residents who have not made the switch to the driving ID to do so and pin their new cards, noting that the national insurance scheme could be the next state agency to utilize the pen and chip technology. Now, when you couple that with the central bank digital currency, remember the only people in this country who have the legitimate right to break money is the central bank. The cash that you got in your pocket doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the central bank. Is a thing, so let me look back and see. I think it says something about that. I you know I used to say it that one thing, but anyhow, I'm losing my money. Put back in here fast, but the central bank digital currency, and this incidentally, the United States Congress has just rejected these central bank digital currency and forbid the Federal Reserve from issuing any of the United States. The American government just did that. Congress just did that. All right? Now, why? When the central bank takes out cash from the society, and you can only use digital currency provided for you by the central bank. And the gentleman presenting the Barbados ID card said that they are working in collaboration with financial institutions and banks. What in essence we are being told without it being said is that inevitably the government will have control over your money and you will not be able to use it as you feel like using it. Case in point, last year when the protesters in Canada against that demon called to know, protesting his mandatory vaccinations. He shut down the accounts of the people who had the ID cards and women could not buy food for their babies and children at their houses. What makes you think that that can't happen here? Huh? Remember when the came for the communists and I was not a communist? So when this central bank digital currency is issued, because it's all trending towards something, these elites who nobody elected to office are determining a global agenda for the entire planet for one purpose and one purpose alone, power and control, no other reason. And they're testing it in the little half stinking countries of the world, like Barbados and Malta and Africa. When you don't test it in France and see if my call don't get his head up off. When you don't test it in the United Kingdom. The guy tested in the United States, so the Congress already shut it down. So they come where? Where you come? Where you come? There's an old saying, the borrower is servant to the lender. He who pays the piper pays the truth. And the reason that I'm standing here today fundamentally speaking out against what I see beginning to happen in our country is because I now have grandchildren who long after I am gone are going to have to clean up the stick we leave if we don't fix it tonight. I'm not worried about my 
my children. My children are big adults and they're with me around here now. But it's my grandchildren who, when they become as old as my children, I may not be around here. God, so tell me he ain't going to be. But I put an application of the for heart and ears because I'm not better than just the that. I know a couple of people only about a hundred heart ten. As vibrant as I am tonight. So I put an application so I may very well be here. I put it in earlier like a foolish thing that after he get enough so he went back and beg for it. And 15 years later he produced the worst, the most wicked thing that ever written in Israel. I put it in my early. <laughs> for an extension. That is why we are in this movement. We are in this movement because we are opposing for opposing sake. We have a deep concern about the future and the direction of our country that is being taken with our consultation with the people. Just because you're going into office does not make you Lord God. No. Can I remember the day? It was when 2022, November 33, became a republic. Is that when it was? Anybody here can define for me what a republic is? Can anybody here tell me what is a republic? Can I tell you what it is? Can I tell you what a republic is? A republic is by the people, for the people, all the people, not by the parliament, of the parliament, for the parliament. It is by the people, people. And I hear a lot of talk about meetings around Barbados. Where people can't go and talk freely because they're intimidated. That's why we're in this forum. Where we can come and we can talk the truth without people arguing. We don't have any agendas here. I am not up for election to any UN position. I already have mine. That's why, that is why Marcia when she announced me, called me His Excellency. I already have my position. I don't have to fight for it or be nominated for it. It was given to me because of the hard work that I've done over the years. The organization that awarded me that position in 2018, an international United Nations affiliate organization, gave me that position and made me a put in connection with some of the wealthiest philanthropic donors on the planet. And I approached not just this government, the last one too. And I can't tell you how much, and I won't tell you who. Because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the right thing for me to do. And all the time is, oh, we, we don't want to engage that at this time. You don't want to engage it because you can't use these funds how you want to. When I talk with the philanthropic donors that I'm affiliated with, and I will tell you now, the one I'm currently working with, trying to navigate how we are going to deal with the financial transfers within the Caribbean area, it's so big that the economies of the West Indies for the last 50 years cannot measure up to 20% of what they possess. You, you won't figure it out. And I spoke with a, 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 a president of an institution in this country who said to me, for man, the future success of our Caribbean territories lies in the hands of philanthropic donors. Now I don't understand, you have a philanthropic donor that is proposing an opportunity to alleviate the entire debt that Barbados has and you can't entertain them. But you can get one who can entertain, you will entertain the bit of school. Yes, I tell you. But you can't entertain them to help Barbados out of its fiscal crisis. Let me get back to this. I need her. Are you distracting me? No, please stop that. <laughs> so when you pick this ID card, and then you have to go to your bank and you you have to connect your own that listen, I don't care what the pen is, hands or butts, your own have to connect that ID card to your bank account. It happened in New Zealand. It happened in Australia, it happened in England, and what makes you think in England happened here? But guess what? You know their country.
preachers have stood up and said, not here. All right. We have countries in Africa refusing to embrace it. I admire. I admire and I respect my African brothers. They got more in Destiny 42 than we have. The Delhi United States of America will get your agenda when it comes to agenda and you know what to do with it. But here we represent the culture and the practices of our people. That is the government that we are asking for in this country. We are asking the people, the government in this country to represent what we as a people have in our country. Our culture, our practices, our faith, our workings, not that of some international agency. Look at the child protection bill. Who's the first person? And they're submitting to the international agencies. I would think that if you might have a child protection bill, the first people you should be addressing are children. But just like this, I mean, you are compliant with the international arena and try to force some of the people a control mechanism that in years to come, when the next pandemic not is not is, when the next pandemic that Bill Gates and Charles Swap planning comes into being, and you come over and you say you have to do this, we have no choice because we can shut our money down. And if you want to control a man, control his money. I'm, well, sorry. 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 If you want to control a person, but I don't know. I, I, I don't be careful now because we don't know as a man and we don't know as a woman. I don't know. I never have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it now. But I just want to try to be respectful. I'm going to try to be respectful. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a tall boy. No, no, but when I'm ready to leave you, please, when I'm ready, you, you will be sorry to stir me up. But that is the control mechanism that is being positioned. And quickly, let me, because my time is gone and I, I want to respect my time. It is moving towards something called 15 minute cities. Where you remember during the pandemic, you were told you go more to a certain place from your house. You remember that? But how could you measure that? Unless they get you on the road. But now, with the ID connected through the financial systems of this country, you will have, like, like, like me, if I live in Market Hill, I can't shop no further in Market Hill supermarket because when I go over the popular, my card will not work. Yes, when I go to buy gas at, at, at the Y, it will not work because I've got a gas station in Market Hill. You see, this is where it is going. Let him that hath an ear hear. Believe me. 